Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from DanceTube.tv and if you're new to the channel then get ready for some brutally honest tech reviews. This is my review of the Foxier Box 2 and it's their second attempt at this cube design to the action camera world. The GoPro Session is its closest competitor and that thing is discontinued so it's hard to get your hands on unfortunately. GoPro discontinued it, I have no idea why. There is still a demand for this form factor. So the Box 2 is Foxy's attempt at trying to get in on some of that market share. So it's got a very similar design um, and it's got a few other similarities but that is kind of where it all falls apart. Anyway, if you're new like I mentioned before, we're all about brutally honest tech reviews on the channel. Make sure to subscribe if you're new here and smash Smash it, that notification bell, so you actually get notified when I release new videos. Anyway, enjoy the video, and leave a comment below with some feedback on the box too. Is this the box of your dreams? So first things first, when it comes to design, it's got a similar design. I think I prefer the Session design. It's a lot more rugged, plus it's actually waterproof. Where this unit here has a flap on top, making it not waterproof in the slightest, but it does reveal a few of the different ports you have available. So you have USB-C, you have a HDMI, a mini HDMI output, and then you have your micro SD slot. So a few decent options there. You then also have the record button on the side and the power button as well. And these buttons also interchangeably work as mode buttons. And then that's kind of it. That's pretty much the camera. And then everything else operates from the application that you can download. And this is where it falls apart, honestly. The footage from this thing is phenomenal, even though it doesn't stabilize footage at all and it's meant to be an action camera. The footage that you will see from my channel is going to showcase how poor the stabilization is. When you have some static shots, it's fine if it's mounted to a tripod, but in that case, why would it be an action camera? It's not very action-y if you just have to sit it there. So I've got some really cool shots of my friends RC Cars, Brandon and Brad, and they basically just started drifting around the track and we tried to get some really cool shots. Now the footage looks interesting. I love how it actually comes out. The quality is phenomenal, but that stabilization is not there in the slightest. It's actually relatively simple to connect. You turn it on, you then press and hold the record button, which then goes into the pairing mode. You connect it to the Wi-Fi hotspot that is created. So that actually works really well. So initially I was like, oh, this could actually be half decent. This is gonna be impressive. And then you load up the application and you're kind of instantly disappointed. It's just low quality, no real effort's been put into it. A lot of the time it just doesn't work. And also back to the actual functionality of these buttons, they have been really hit and miss for me. It's been stressful almost. Like when we were recording, I had no idea if it was recording or not. It just kept coming up with random beeps. Then I'd go to the application and it wouldn't tell me that things were recorded. It would say that there were no videos, but it seemed like it was recording. So basically I was in the dark until I got home. That is not what you need in an action camera. You do not need that stress at all. This is the actual feed here. You don't get too much delay. It's pretty responsive. It's not too bad. You can see there's a lot of options. There's a lot of potential. They've actually put thought into this. They've given you basically every option under the sun here. You have full control of the ISO limit. You've got sharpness, contrast, saturation, white balance, metering. You've got auto low light modes, uh, heaps of different options. And then when it comes to video resolutions, you've got 4K 30, so beautiful. And like I said, the footage is actually really nice. And that goes all the way down to 720p 120 frames. So you have slow motion options. And then in 1080p, you can go up to 120 frames as well. So on paper, this thing looks great. You know, it sounds fantastic. You've got all of these different options, but then it just falls apart when you're actually using the device, which really disappointed me because I wanted this thing to be easy. I've taken it out multiple times now and it just hasn't been reliable for me. Like I mentioned before, there are some really good things about this unit itself. It has a really decent camera. So the actual video quality is phenomenal. It has the USB-C option, so it's actually got a fast charging option as well. The battery life isn't too bad. I would have liked to have seen a better battery life, 
but it was okay for the most part. I also noticed that the unit does get quite hot as well. There's no like ventilation system at all, even though this thing isn't waterproof because the flap on top definitely would not be waterproof. So unfortunately that's not a thing. You have to really worry about that as well. And it's getting hot right now, like, and I'm not even recording, I'm not doing anything on it, it's just connected to the app. I want to love this thing, I really do, because GoPro really, you know, let go of that market share, which is ridiculous. They should be producing a camera of that form factor, it literally has a place in the FPV world, it has a place in the RC world, it has a place in a lot of different hobbies, and I don't understand why they would remove it. But anyway, that's their choice. Other companies can capitalize now. And this camera, the Foxeer Box 2, really tried to be that. It basically looks like a session. Everything from the screws on the front, to the form factor, to the way it feels in the hand, even the materials they've used feel very similar to the GoPro session. That user experience is key. If you don't have a screen, that user experience is like the most fundamental thing. If people can't use this camera, as a camera, then why would they want to use it? Why would they not just use an alternative camera? It makes no sense. So please guys, update the application, make it more stable, make it more reliable, make this thing one of the easiest systems to use because you really could capitalize on that market share. When it comes to the actual button functionality as well, that just isn't phenomenal. Sometimes when it works, it works great, and you start recording, and it's recording, and you're like, okay, great, this is good. And then you'll stop recording, and it'll make like a really weird sound, and you're kind of like, uh, right, I don't understand if that's not recording. So you try to connect it to the app, and then it says failed to record when you try to actually use the application to record. So then you have to turn the whole unit off, turn it back on again, and then it seems to work at that point. So it's just too much confusion, and it needs to be streamlined. It needs to be the easiest thing in the world. It really needs to be user-friendly and ready to go. So again, awesome concept. Well, GoPro kind of had the original concept, but well, maybe the Polaroid Cube actually, there was a, a bit of stuff going on there. But GoPro or Polaroid, whoever came out with it, GoPro most likely, they had this cool concept. They wanted to go with something unique, a cool form factor. Unfortunately, there really isn't too many sessions available right now. It's a hard thing to get your hands on, and it's very common for people in the hobbyist world to actually want to have something of this form factor without that chunky screen. So, has potential. This thing is burning my hands right now. Not the most optimized thing in the world, and it's their second version, so I do not want to see what the first version is like. But if you're in the market for something like this, at a relatively affordable price that actually shoots really nice 4K, isn't the most stable footage, but actually shoots really nice 4K, then check out the Foxeer Box 2. I will have links in the description below, or I have a link in the description below to check it out. Maybe I will have multiple links, who knows? I'll, I'll leave that as a mystery for you guys. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure to keep tuned to the channel, as I do have a lot more really cool content coming to the channel very soon. That's it though, make sure to have a phenomenal day, and peace out.